Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, September 7, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The first thing we'll do is take a 30,000 foot view of the daily chart, see if anything's jumping off the page at us. What's the horizontal line at 450.71 represent? We'll get to that in a few minutes, but it goes into the mix of things that are really important, and that's going to play into the rest of the week, whether it becomes bullish or bearish. We could say that's pretty close to a pivot. We'll circle back to that later. The big picture is the market for days and days and days has been eating time off the clock near the highs. That's the big picture. Tomorrow is really an important day when you look at the daily chart and you say, how many days has they been eating time off the clock? Tomorrow should be, and let's use this term, moving day. So what are we saying? We're saying that some energy is likely to be released out of the market, whether it's in the northern or southern direction, We'll drill down on that as this video goes along when we look at the shorter term charts other than the daily chart where some of the clues reside. A little bit of a recap, over the last couple of weeks we've been discussing the fact that when we get into that mid-September time frame, we could see and we should see volatility come back into the market. Along with volatility, a lot of other things should come back into the market. We've been climbing the wall of worry. From a cycle perspective and a natural turning point perspective, the middle of September is extremely important. When we get to these periods, there's a couple of dates that I've got my eye on. I'm going to keep them under wraps for the time being. But it's going to be extremely important whether or not the market's making a high into a certain date or a low into a certain date Because following that date, we should be in for some kind of a reversal. So what does that tell you? It tells you maybe there's going to be one of these melt-up slash blow-off tops over the next, let's say, week or two or within the next week or two. Or maybe we sell off again and maybe they have another recocking of the gun, just like they've done many, many times. If they do that, We could then go up another time, make new highs yet again, and we have the discussion all over again. It will be extremely important whether the market is trading down into or up into these time frames. How about if we take a look at some other charts to get a more rounded picture of what the SPY or the S&P 500 is actually doing? Here's where we begin to develop some things that are happening and then the what-if scenarios. So when we look at the 240-minute chart, I'm zeroed in, and we discussed this last week, so it stays the same. We discussed this breakup candle, and the low is 450.71. We talked about that same number from a lot of different perspectives. Inside the numbers, members have been zeroed in on that number several times. You can see what happened today in the first 240-minute candle of the day. The low happens to be 450.74. The low of the breakup candle is 450.71. What did they do? They ran a test. We discuss this kind of thing all the time. Generally speaking, the first time they run a test of a breakup candle low or a breakdown candle high, it's going to have it, meaning the market, is going to have a reaction in the other direction. However, in this case, they've already kind of been down there testing that breakup candle low. However, that doesn't mean it's not important, it's just not the same as the first time. Those are two different things. In this case, and again, we discussed this last week, the price level was important. You had the 20 period moving average rising up right into that zone, You have a breakup candle low. It's an important spot, and you're generally going to have a bull bear battle slash reaction at an important spot. Now, sometimes you have a reaction, and then they go back down, and they fail and go lower, but you still get that stutter step at a minimum. You still get the bull bear battle at important numbers, which, by the way, 
tells us that they're important numbers. It reconfirms the numbers. So for example, and I'm really speaking to inside the number members, when you see me put numbers up on the board and price approaches a number like that, and we saw it a couple of times today, and you start to see price fluctuation and you start to see the market kind of wake up when they get to that number, the bull bear battle ensues. It's telling you, it's reconfirming that that is, yes, an important number. Why is that important? Well, because if this number's important, then there's some kind of likelihood that the next number I put out is also going to be important. It's all about confidence. It's about removing the guesswork as much as we can from trading and adding in confidence. When we have confidence and we enter a trade, we have a different emotional foundation in that trade. What's another way to say that? We're not going to shit our pants so fast. What happens when we switch over to a 120-minute chart? It's the same thing. The market just gets expanded. It spreads out a little bit. It's easier to see. Here's the breakup candle low, same number, 450.71. And you can see in the first 120-minute candle of today, the same low. They ran a test, they turned around, and they went back up in the other direction to where? in the neighborhood of the breakdown candle high. Why is that important? Because it reconfirms that the market does the same stuff over and over and over again, and we know that because we point it out every single day and we watch it happen basically in real time. So while on one hand, yes, I'm bonkers, inside my head is a dangerous place to be, on the other hand, I'm on to something, don't you think? By the way, another teachable slash learnable moment. What else is going on in the 120-minute chart or on the 120-minute chart? Something we have to take notice of because it's not really definitive what's going on for tomorrow, leading into tomorrow. We have two possibilities. Possibility number one, we have a breakdown candle. They ran a test or well, they will continue to run a test of the high or in the neighborhood of the high of the breakdown candle, and then they'll go lower once again. They're eating time off the clock. They're forming some kind of a wedge, a bearish, wedgish pattern. One of those things is on the table. But what else is going on here is we have one of these potential patterns inside of a pattern. So inside of the breakdown candle, You have a breakup candle. It's smaller, but yet from a smaller fractal standpoint, it's certainly valid. And this is just on the 120-minute chart. We're going to look at other charts to either confirm or unconfirm what we're seeing here. We have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. So let's say that inside of the breakdown candle, we have the breakup candle, And let's say they're eating time off the clock inside the breakup candle and they're building energy to make another push higher. Well, guess what? If they do that and the setup is there to do that as long as they what? As long as they close 120-minute candles inside the low, above the low of this particular candle, 451.03. By the way, Take notice of where they closed today, 451.53 within pennies, but you're going to see that same number inside the numbers. I was thinking about it. I noticed it, so I thought I would bring it to the forefront real quick. It's called a sidebar. Now, back to business. So let's say that this breakup candle, the one inside, actually works out and it pushes price back up once again. Well, guess what we have? We have back to the breakdown candle high, which happens to be 452.81. So let's say they're up in that neighborhood on Wednesday morning, 452.81, give or take. If they start pushing above or they start closing candles above that spot, and certainly a 120-minute candle above that spot, they're right back up around the highs, poised to yet again get into no man's land, making new highs. Now, if they can't do that and they're not able to get above that same number, 452.81, 
Whether or not they go up there or not, we don't know yet. But if they can't get above that and they're coming in the other direction or headed in the southern direction, or even they go up there and run a test, but they can't get through it, that's a bearish signal. And then we look to the breakdown candle and we say, well, we have a breakdown candle. They ate time off the clock. There's another bout of energy that's going to be released. And if the breakdown candle is going to hold true to what happens the majority of the time, there's going to be another leg lower. So we have 452.81 as the bogey on the north side. And then we have the other side of that that would pull price below today's lows to some other area. Okay, what's the other area? If they're coming down south, where are the support zones? We can look at it from a logical perspective. But first, let's continue on and just confirm or reconfirm what we're seeing on the 120-minute chart in terms of the pattern and potentially the pattern inside of the pattern. So here, the pattern inside of the pattern doesn't really look as good as it did on the 120-minute chart. Here, it looks, and this is my opinion, right? Sometimes I'm telling you an opinion, but when I am, I'm telling you that it's an opinion because the numbers never lie and we'll use the numbers to dictate what should happen next. But my opinion is that they tried to run a test of the breakdown candle high and they're in the process of failing. Had they stayed above the 50 period moving average, I may have a different outlook leading into Wednesday morning but the fact that they gave up the 50 into the end of the day, from a visual standpoint, it looks more like a move down, a built a wedge pattern, eat some time off the clock, and now they're coming down again to complete the thing. And now the thing is, where do they go? Where is that downside? Where is the next area of support? Good question. Let's look at it from a logical perspective. Today, they ran a test of a breakup candle low. So let's assume for a second, for the purposes of this conversation, that number's done, it's over, we're looking to the next number. In order to hold true, they have to break the lows and go lower. What's the next spot? Well, you have a gap right here, and that was basically on the table today. If they came a little bit lower, they were getting into my preferred buy zone. We'll see more of that when we go inside the numbers in a couple of moments. But here's the thing with that gap. They came close today. So that gap is nowhere near the same type of situation, the same type of support that it was today. If they came down this morning into that gap, you're more likely to get a bounce back in the other direction, in the northern direction, away from that gap, than you're not likely. It's a high probability trade today. Tomorrow, it's not even close to the same probabilities because you're already in the ballpark. When you look at market symmetry, and for those of you that don't know about or understand how market symmetry works, you might want to check out the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. There's an entire module on market symmetry, how it works, how we view it, and how we use it. So when I'm looking at the current state of the tape, and I look at this hourly chart, and I consider market symmetry, and I think, what's below the gap? What's the next thing below that gap? that is extremely important, the next big time important spot. Well, it's right here, around 449.35. Maybe it's 449, maybe it's 448.90, maybe it's 449.51. Somewhere in this neighborhood is the next spot. Why is that? And most of you know exactly what I'm gonna say now, but here it is. The market ran up to this spot, kind of hung out for a little while, but was rejected. Then the market went back, broke out above that spot, did what it did over the last several days, and if it were to come back, and when it does come back, to retest that spot, that is, in fact, a former breakout area, and therefore we could expect and should expect, at least from an intraday perspective, garden variety of market and chart support. How do you like Dem Apples? Now, are we saying that the market is definitely going to that spot? Well, someday, eventually, it's going to go to that spot. The question is, is it going there tomorrow? Is it going there next Tuesday? Tomorrow, that spot will be support. If it goes there next Tuesday, 
we can't say the same thing because we don't know how it got in there. Did they eat time off the clock before they got there right above it? That's a whole different ball game. Not all breakout and breakdown areas are created equal. They're treated differently depending on when they're approached and how they're approached. Hashtag reading the tape. What about inside the numbers? What we're going to do is run through the commentary. I'm going to point out a number of important items. What I urge you to do is pause the video and read the notes. After you've read the notes, go back to the chart to double check to see what's happening after I've written the notes. Did the market do the thing that we said it was going to do and whether or not you're able to take advantage of knowing that information. Let's get right into the early thoughts. It can't be turnaround Tuesday because markets were closed on Monday. Just saying. Things were quiet in the pre-market. No surprise following one of those long weekends. Kind of happens where the market is less volatile following a three-day holiday weekend. A lot of traders like to make it into a four-day weekend. I don't know that for a fact. Seems to be prevailing wisdom in the trading community. We'll go with it. The numbers were pretty straightforward. On the south side, we had 452.50, give or take, that support below that. And keep in mind, this is in the pre-market at zero dark 30 when these notes are posted. Below 451.95, check the commentary for the next number. Now, you'll note, again, remember, this is zero dark 30. This might as well be 452. Keep that number on a sticky note. Up north, we don't have to worry about. They didn't go up north. As for stocks on the move, there was a limited number of stocks on the move this morning. We had a small list. We'll circle back to that later. Let's see what else we have in the commentary. Right out of the gate around the opening bell, they were testing the first support zone. Just to get the visual, this is a five-minute chart. Right at your vertical is today's activity. 452.50 is the horizontal line in the middle of the screen. They ran right into it, got below it immediately, and they couldn't even get back to it at the end of the day. We use that information later as a, oh, by the way, I know this was important and they couldn't get back there and they came within pennies. They could have chosen to go back there. They were weak enough not to be able to reach an important spot. I file that away for later. We're letting them go a little bit at the open, see what's what. We need to get a handle on the early storyline. They started to drip lower, so you start focusing what's lower, what's going on lower. How about the 941 post? Remember 45071. So right out of the chute, I see the writing on the wall. That doesn't mean they're going to get there. That means if they get there, I'm interested in that spot because it is certainly a destination. Just because I know something is an important number, which makes it a destination if they get there in a hurry, that doesn't mean they're going to get there today, but I know that it is a destination, it is important, therefore, how the market is getting there raises my antennas, if you will. If they're getting there in a hurry, I'm going to take that trade. Then we have a little bit more commentary around that potential trade, that area, 450.33 right below that. That basically represented the area where that gap was. Remember, I said before, had they hit that today, they would have had a reaction in the other direction 97.5 times out of 100. We're moving along. Next, and we had a little confusion on these numbers. They looked like the other numbers, but they were different numbers. It just looked the same. 944 post, you'll see what I'm saying in a minute. 45171 is not the same as 45071, but it was still an important spot. Down to 45135. If that zone is reached in this decline, there should be a bounce back in the other direction. The 944 post. Again, with the visual, 45135 is this line down here. You can see the low in this candle here was 451.31, the low in this candle, 451.31, the bounce back made a high of 451.82. We'll just call it five S&P handles. You don't know exactly how much of a bounce back you're going to get, but you got the reaction in the other direction. That's what we said was going to happen. After the bounce back, they come back down again. It's showtime for the bulls, 
at 450.71 down to 450.33 if reached. We switched over to a 15-minute chart, and here's the rub. Here's the low, 450.74 against what I wanted, which was 450.71 or lower. A little bit stingy, I get it, but some traders hopped on board. It wasn't a definitive, you can't take the trade without this number being hit. It was a, this is where I'm willing to take the trade. This is the zone. If a trader chooses to jump in ahead of time, that becomes trader choice. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying I know traders do it. And that was after a pseudo retest or a retest, they just didn't get to the number. That was a support zone for low of day. Could you use this information if you're active in the market during the trading day? I think the answer is yes. Who wouldn't want to know that? Some traders know that. Many traders didn't know that. Know what? 450.71, give or take pennies, was going to be a support zone. And dare I say, under normal garden variety market conditions. 10.14, they got to the showtime area for the bulls, didn't spike through 450.71, but you could see what is going on in the general zone. It's important as prescribed. Staying above 450.71 on candle closes should allow the bulls to make a test of around 452. Could take some time, and they have to stay above 450.71. Well, there you go. They did it anyway. Real quick, traders that were long, 451.75 to 452 is the zone. So if you're long, you're not waiting for them to get to the actual target to the penny. You take profit along the way, and I'm giving you a 25 cent zone. So if a trader hopped on board, even in front of the number, there's your target. So you have entry, you have where it's wrong, and you have exit target slash profit target. What else could you possibly be looking for? There's 451.75, there's 452, which comes into play later. It becomes the late pivot late in the day. You'll see that in the notes later. And a trader who might have been long, and this is just trade school 101, a trader that might have got long down here, even if you're taking profit along the way, this doesn't have to be the final profit. It can be another profit. If a trader wants to hold a trailer, you don't know if they're going to jam them up into the end of the day. They do it all the time. We just don't know which day it's coming. So holding a trailer isn't necessarily wrong. It's for a trader that wants to hold a trader for one of those end of day jam sessions. From this point forward, I'm going to scroll up, pause the video, read the notes. There's 452. You're going to see all this stuff that's important, stuff you need to know during the trading day. Here's the setup going into lunch. What are they doing? They're going to do one of two things. They're going to build a bearish pattern, a bearish wedge pattern. That's really one thing. Or they're going to continue lower. What did they do? They did the wedge thing. We're moving along. The numbers are working. The next target after the first target, 452.75, give or take. They never got to that one, but it's on the board just in case they head up that way. Again, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the charts to double check the work. Here's our list of stocks on the move. Nothing hit today. Even though it says AU hit, it hit into the end of the day. We can take a look at the chart, but nothing hit its number. Therefore, they're off the board. They just become no trades. No harm, no foul. There's your AU trade. I know I said it hit into the end of the day. It hovered into the end of the day. I should have said it creeped into the number. It found support. It bounced. It just never gave a rocket ride. It never did anything except really hung around back and forth on top of the number, hanging out for a cup of coffee. So yes, it was support. And yes, they gave the minimum required base hit or very, very close to it. We're splitting hairs over a penny or two, but they just never gave a rocket ride. It was in fact support. What have we got for Camp IWM? Well, last week we talked about what? We talked about the fact that 229 to 230 was the next important spot that they weren't going to just waltz on through. Important spots are magnetic, but they're also, in this case, resistance, and now they're pulling back. However, when we take a look at the big picture, 
The big picture is now they're back above all the moving averages and the trend is your friend until she throws you out the third story window. Weekly chart remains above the weekly chart 20 period moving average. Now, hear this for a second. Now, while it's above all the moving averages, that certainly is positive. It's not bearish by any means. However, the 20 period moving average on this weekly chart really isn't all that important. They've been back and forth. They've been beating on it. They've been below it. They're back above it. What happens is as you cut up and above and back down below this moving average, it diminishes the importance. They've been riding this moving average since way back. I can make a case all the way back to here where they ran a test of it. Here they ran a test. So back in April, they really started riding this moving average. So on one hand, when it looks like they're going to give up the moving average and start going lower, you say, well, they've been teetering and riding the moving average, so it's got to be important. Now they're back above it. It's got to be important. So I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying it's not the same situation where a market will run to a specific spot. Let's say it's a moving average, and let's say they come from afar. You're going to get that reaction in the other direction away from that moving average, but here, they've basically been riding it back and forth, so I don't look at it the same way. It's just food for thought, you're inside my head, dangerous place to be. Wear galoshes. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Did anybody notice the close on Friday? Here's Friday, the closing price, 14760 pardon me, 751.62. The important spot was what? 14760 Did you think I was kidding? They had every opportunity to close above that number, and they didn't do it. I look at that, scratch my head, and say, as long as I'm right about the number and the fact that they've been hanging around that number for a long time, I can tell it's important. Now the fact that they made an effort to close below that number on the week, that tells me something, and here they are, over 100 points removed. That's an important spot. Take it to the bank. Here's a picture of the weekly chart, and you can certainly make a case that the more they can't get up and over and away from in the northern direction, 14,760, the more it looks like you're going to see one of these jobs right down into the 50 period moving average, right in this general zone somewhere in this neighborhood, I could certainly refine the numbers just doing this visually on the weekly chart. That's my take as far as the transports are concerned. What about the Silicon Valley people, the Q people? Anything to discuss here? Not really. They're eating time off the clock, around the highs, above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. We simply move it along. It's a top heavy weighted index, but price is the absolute arbiter. They're at new highs, they're close to new highs, call it what you will. When you look at the monthly chart, when you want to call it something, you call it a melt-up operation. What about the financials, the XLF? So they made a run at that double top up here. They couldn't bust through, now they're coming down, now they spent a couple of days closing below the 20 period moving average. So what's the next order of business? 37.45 is on the docket, and once that, if that doesn't hold, 36.95. After they run a test of this general zone down here at the convergence of these moving averages, if they give it up, that's a whole different ball game. If they're just running a test, so be it. They bounce up again, and we address it from that point forward. Smash Mouth, down half a buck today. It's more of a rounding error. They're eating time off the clock around the highs, building energy for another move. Now, if they're building energy for another move and they start to go lower, that same energy will get released in the downward direction and 265, 264 will be on the docket rather quickly. As it stands now, you take stuff at face value and you say, what are they doing? They're basically eating time off the clock, going back and forth inside of the last breakup candle Below is 267.32, as long as they stay daily closing above that and above all the moving averages, they're building energy for another push higher, period, full stop. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost. 
my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.